Cool. Now we go through the second step of quality function deployment QFD or house of quality. In this step, we speak about product requirements. Last time, in the last assignment, you were told to think about yourself as a water pistol producer, a water pistol company. If you didn't do the exercise yet, please stop the video now and do it as instructed on this slide. Then continue to the next slide. If you really think about water pistol company and water pistol customer types, kids are a natural choice, of course, and probably also most will have adults who buy for kids. But how many were thinking about wholesalers, retailers, distributors, or adults who buy for themselves, for example, for stack parties? It's always important to understand that there might be several different customer types. And that's why we do this as a team exercise, that we could find as many possible customer types as possible. When we also remember that there are external, internal and regulatory customers, that expands the thinking of customer times more again. And if we then take also the sustainability features, that will add different types of customers more even than before. Like you have already done when you have been thinking about the Kano model and customer types in the voice of the customer exercise. So, if you think about the customer requirements, what they have told, what is what they want to see, is if we speak with kids, they probably tell something like, like shoots far, shoots hard, shoots straight, easy to shoot, and so on. When adults probably want to have durability, so it lasts a long time and it's safe. That is how you should think about your different customers, what the customers want in different categories, in different customer types. And then when we go to design requirement, which is the second part or second step of QSD, the what needs to be moved to house, meaning how will these requirements that the customer have, have told us to be measured or how we translate the customer terms so that we can have them in a process or feature terms. And we also need to identify the ways to deliver on customer needs. And that is for this area marked two is meant for. So, like said, this is a team exercise. And when we think about performance measures, it's the job for the team to translate or deploy each customer need in each customer type in the technical performance measure. And you have to remember that each need can have more than one technical performance measure. Meaning that in some cases, one requirement might lead to different types of measures or performance indicators. And you also should define the direction of goodness. Meaning, is it best to have less, more? Or what's the target level that you should reach? Here is a couple examples of VOCs and performance measures. If the customer wants more capacity, of course, larger is better. And 
it can be measured, for example, in cubic meters of storage. Or if it's a container, how many pallets can be put in. When we speak about price, usually what's smaller the better. And it's measured in some currency like euros. Reliability with at least machinery and IT systems is the mean time between failures. And what higher the number, the better. And so on. So in this phase, we move from what's to how's. And when we then think the what is what things, we again again start to think about how we do the things so that they actually give some features and benefits the client is waiting for. So we go first from what's to house and then house to what's again in the next phases. Here is an example of a bank that we actually did the project in where this exercise was done. So customers had expressed that important for them are, for example, willingness to answer questions, knowing the loan process, you get money when you need it, you don't make mistakes, and with a bit less their importance, treats me nice, understands my situation, and also that application is fast to fill out, and so on. And we have, as you see, scored to importance for all. Then on this vertical line, you see that there are different things, like minimize the number of customer complaints. That can be one measure. Minimize the number of errors in entry process, and so on. So in this phase, we change the things that customers have told us to something that is tangible, something that we can really work with. One option also is to work already now with the product functions. Also, processes may be better to use than measures of performance, especially if the product or service has already been established and there is no need for really breakthrough concepts. There is no need for drastic changes. It just needs to be adjusted for the modern requirements. And also, if the development team have a lack of time, this can be basically a temporary solution to fix the things now and move forward later. Also, if the product features have various levels of detail, it's good to start on a high level and do, based on product functions or processes, the first measures, first planning, and then work downwards until you are satisfied that all the features are needed, are also met. You can use three diagrams, and most people, when they start, only work at one level and then continue further. Again, remember the principle of eating the elephant. Take one small piece at a time. Here is a way to look at product functions. In this example, we use professional camera, meaning camera that is not digital like the ones people usually use if they use camera at all. Most people now use their mobile phones to take photos. But when we speak about professionals, they still have cameras where it's different subsystems, films and so on to make really high level professional photos and pictures. So in the matching subsystem, there's the lens, film plane, it should be a light-proof compartment between lens and film. 
in finding such subsystem. They should be take-up spool, fill and advanced subsystem, film supply subsystem, and so on. So again, when with different products for different customers, there might be different needs that we have to take into account. Here is the water pistol example that we already started with. And you see that there is clear product requirements and also in the bottom of the house, in the foundation part, you can see that there is also real measures. For example, when we think about shoots far, so what is the shot distance? It's been putting down at it's 30 feet. So about 10 meters. And that same way we have described the different features here. And as you can see here in this example, we have also used different scoring for the numbers so that we have actually used from one to nine. The scoring being one, three and nine to get bigger difference between the numbers. You will understand it later how it's done. And we also have competitive analysis at the site, showing how our new gun, Zero, is compared to two competitors. So we can also check already now what is the potential in the markets with each feature. All those things will help when we decide where to focus first, as you will learn later. So these are actually helping to think about design requirements. And these two slides show what are the basic principles. So establishing the design requirements is the way to set the foundation upon which we build the product or service that is based on the customer needs and what customers actually want. Since if the design requirements do not correctly respond to the customer needs, it's a major risk that we will produce something that is not going to be successful on the market. These needs may have many characteristics or measures and these, in turn, may work for many needs. You should never try to maintain a one-to-one -one customer needs to design requirement ratio, because that will make probably the whole products either undoable or too expensive. So think again in a team, which are the most important things that you have to focus on. And like I said, on this we also continue a bit of these basic principles. So brainstorming a team effort after reviewing the VOC and also benchmarking if you have good companies or products to benchmark against is an effective way to identify what characteristics, what measures to use. So a good question to answer always in this phase is, how would we measure or evaluate that we satisfy this need, which again is on this first line on horizontal order, then we answer on the vertical level. It's always good to brainstorm the features about the products or service that are important. And you can also review each process step to make sure that it's doable, and it's a clever thing to do. By interactions, the translation from what's to how's is, is always a bit complicated. Since one how can address several what's, and the how's can also be adversely, it, it might actually affect each other in a negative manner. So these steps that we explain now are actually the next steps that we do in the analysis phase. You will learn them later. So again, read this and listen to this and then stop the video. 
to start working with your QFT template. In the learning environment, you will find it in the additional tools and materials. In that template you have, you probably have a different way to look at, at the competition part, but you can change the, the templates how you want. So download the QFD template, use the develop VOC, and develop either the performance measures and then make them into functional processes or start with the functional process and write the technical re re response, the house, how to answer them, like what's in this water pistol example.